Today, I present to you Citius Pharmaceuticals, a microcap company with global aspirations and a Latin name. Will Citius ascend to the heavens on Mercury's winged sandals to feast on tendies on the moon? Or will they crash into the grounds like the Roman Empire from which their name descends? Hey everybody, Walrus here from Walrus Street, bringing you a DD today on Citius Pharmaceuticals, ticker CTXR. Just a reminder, I am not a financial professional. All information in this video is for entertainment purposes only. And I told myself I wasn't gonna do another medical or medical technology company. And I really, I wasn't. Enough of my portfolio is dedicated to this, but... Once I started researching this company and I realized they have a product that's in phase three testing right now that's been fast tracked by the FDA and it's likely to get clearance this year, I had to do it. I had to do it. I had to do it. It's an undervalued company. It's a micro cap with low float. I do want to thank one of my YouTube viewers, Man Man, for bringing the stock to my attention because I do look into everything you guys tell me about and I liked what I found and that's why I'm doing the video today. I went on to YouTube and I looked to see if there was any other good content about this. I did find some videos. There's been a sprinkling of them in the last couple of weeks. None of them really went into the depth on Sidious that I know you guys deserve. So here I am. Let's go ahead and get into it. Sidious Pharmaceuticals. This is their website, Sidious Pharma. They are pursuing a new standard of care. Sidious Pharmaceuticals is a specialty pharmaceutical company dedicated to the development and commercialization of therapeutic products for growing markets. Sidious products offer new and expanded indications for previously approved pharmaceutical products as a means to achieve leading market positioning. I just listened to a presentation with their chairman before I recorded this video. And one of the things this company stresses is being innovative. And I know all companies do that, but really, as you guys are going to see in a moment, everything that they do have in their pipeline is completely innovative. There's really no competition. Sidious, according to their chairman, comes from the Olympic motto, Sidious Altius Fortius. These words mean faster, higher, and stronger. If you invest in Sidious, you're investing into a Daft Punk song. Harder, better, faster, stronger. Also, their logo is a C with Mercury's winged sandals in it. This is kind of cute since they're focusing on speed. And that speed, according to their chairman, means speed to market. They focus on the streamlined FDA approval process in order to get their products in the market as soon as possible. Now, their primary product that we're going to talk about today is going to be the Mino Lock. They have other products, and I'll, I'll go over them briefly at the end of the video. But for the beginning now, I want to talk about Mino Lock because this is their cash cow. This is the product that's going to bring them the most money money to fund the rest of their research. Minolock is an antibiotic lock solution used to treat patients with catheter-related bloodstream infections, CRBSIs. CRBSIs are very serious, especially in cancer patients receiving therapy through central venous catheters, CVCs, and in hemodialysis patients where venous access presents a challenge. There's a lot to unpack there, so let's start with CVCs. So a central venous catheter is also known as a central line, central venous line, or central venous access catheter. It's simply a catheter placed into a large vein. It's typically used in critically ill patients or those receiving prolonged therapies for more reliable vascular access. They're commonly placed in veins in the neck, chest, groin, or through veins in the arms. Now their medical uses are for difficult peripheral venous access, delivery of certain medications or fluids, prolonged intravenous therapies, and specialized treatments. Complications include pneumothorax, vascular perforation, and this is the big one. Look at all these words. Catheter related bloodstream infections. I'm going to simplify this as much as possible. If you're a medical professional, don't kill me for excluding a lot of the important stuff. All catheters can introduce bacteria into the bloodstream. This can result in serious infections that could be fatal in up to 25% of the cases. Fatal in 25% of the cases where bacteria enters the bloodstream through these catheters. This is bad. Now in this presentation today, you're going to see CLABSI and CURBC interchangeably used and they're more or less the same thing. It's just an infection that's in introduced to the patient through the catheter. Most of the bacteria gains access by migrating along the portion of the catheter tracking through subcutaneous tissue until they reach the portion of the catheter in the vein. It's really hard to prevent these types of infections. And you can see right here, the CDC makes a myriad of recommendations regarding risk reduction for the infection of CVCs. Infections with central lines and catheters is something the CDC is really, really worried about because of how high the morbidity rate is for people who get these infections. 
conditions. Other risks include occlusion or venous air embolisms. And there's even possibility of blood clots breaking off and strokes from the catheters. Now, the reason these strokes can possibly occur from the catheters is not really because of the infection. The problem with these catheters is that they can get infected. And right now, the SOC for an infected catheter, the standard of care, is R&R, &R, which is remove and replace. And when you do this remove and replace procedure for an infected catheter, there's a risk of additional infection or there's a risk of triggering a blood clot that can lead to a stroke. There's many, many other risks, but the point is when you do the R&R, &R, you're actually increasing the risk of morbidity, mortality for the patient. This is a PDF that you can get on the Sidious website, Treating Clapsy, a Clinical and Economic Challenge. And it was a roundtable discussion between all of these different MDs. They talk about the magnitude of the Clapsy problem and the challenges associated with the treatment of Clapsy. In spite of the best clinical practices, catheters contribute to approximately 70% of bloodstream infections that occur in the ICU or are associated with hemodialysis or cancer patients, approximately 470,000 per year. Bacteria enter the catheter either from the skin or intraluminally through the catheter hub. Once in the catheter, bacteria tend to form a protective biofilm on the interior surface of the catheter that become resistant to most antimicrobial agents. The most frequently used maintenance flush, heparin, actually stimulates biofilm formation. Heparin is widely used as a prophylactic lock solution in spite of the evidence that it contributes to the promotion of biofilm formation. The formation of bacterial biofilm usually precedes CRBSIs. It goes on talking about how the standard of care is removal and replacement. It's very risky and price. There are approximately 250,000 CRBSIs annually in the US. Since that 2006 study, estimates have ranged upwards to over 450,000 clampsies annually. CRBSIs are associated with 12 to 25% mortality rate and an attributable cost of 46 to $65,000 per episode. 46 to $65,000 per infection. The removal of an infected CVC and replacement of a new catheter and different venous access site is estimated to cost between 8,000 and 10,000. So right now, the SOC, the standard of care, is hella expensive. 8,000 to 10,000 just to remove and replace the CVC, and that's on top of the medical risks associated with the removal and replacement. In the part where they talk about the magnitude of the problem, there's no good treatment for eclapsy. Not any one therapy has shown efficacy in disaffecting and salvaging the infected catheter. The patient's that typically have them are already immunocompromised, which puts them at higher risk. And the incidence may actually be higher than reported. This infection total might actually be even higher. Delve Insight, which is a third party statistics organization, said the market size of CRBSIs in the global market is expected to reach 1.84 billion in 2028, up from 1.24 billion in 2017. Total incidence of catheter related bloodstream infection in the global market is estimated to be 4 million patients. Assuming clinical success in the phase three trial and regulatory approvals achieved, Minolock solution would address a major need in treating CRBSI patients. Now let's look a little more at the cost. CRBSIs are frequently observed in the ICU and are a serious cause of morbidity and mortality in the US. The cost of CRBSIs is between 33 and 44,000 in the general adult ICU, 54 and 75,000 in the adult surgical ICU, 49,000 in the pediatric ICU. CRBSIs are associated with reimbursement that's more than 26,000 less than costs. With reimbursement, more than 26,000 less than costs, the hospitals are footing a big bill here. Minolock from Sidious Pharmaceuticals has a price tag right now of about $1,400. So we're looking at a situation where hospitals are going to be saving, depending on how you value it, something like 30 times the cost of dealing with an infection by simply cleaning out the catheter with Minolock. What is Minolock? It's an antibiotic lock therapy for CRBSIs. It's an antibiotic lock solution. It addresses medical conditions that have unmet medical needs with cost-effective products. In a phase 2B trial, the Minolock product demonstrated 100% efficiency rate in salvaging colonized CVCs. The Minolock product had no significant adverse events compared to an 18% serious adverse event rate when infected CVCs were removed and replaced. So earlier we saw the 12 to 25% adverse event 
20% morbidity mortality rate for removal and replacement. Minoloc doesn't have any of that. It's 100% effective in the phase 2B trials. The FDA liked this idea so much, they fast-tracked it, giving it a QIDP designation and patent protection until June 2024. The formulation patent protection lasts until November 2036. Since the formulation is what makes Minoloc special, they have patent protection until 2036. That's a long time for exclusivity in this product. The Minoloc product is used in two-hour locking cycles, allowing the CVC to be used for its intended purpose for the remaining 22 hours each day. So it only takes two hours to get through the lock cycle to cleanse the infection from the CVC. Both lumens of the catheter infected, this is the biofilm. They have a little diagram here with the thickness of the biofilm. After the use of Minoloc, it eliminates nearly all of the biofilm. Sidious Pharmaceuticals obtained a worldwide license to the patented technology. In March 2016, it announced that it had a worldwide license for Minoloc. Minoloc is patented worldwide. This is a company with global aspirations for this treatment. This is back from November. Sidious announces results of a study that Minoloc eradicates Staphylococcus aureus biofilm more effectively and expeditiously than components. The components would be the parts that the solution is made of. This study demonstrated that all three components of Minoloc, EDTA, ethanol, and minocycline, were superior to the EDTA, ethanol, and ethanol alone. The researchers concluded that, taken together, the results suggest that MLT can eradicate the biofilm quicker than EDTA and ethanol alone. Why did they choose Staphylococcus aureus? Staphylococcus aureus is one of the most worrisome pathogens in catheter-related bloodstream infections. It receives special considerations even in the IDSA guidelines for treating Cripsy. Now, this is the QIDP designation that the product received from the FDA. This designation means that Minoloc is eligible for additional FDA incentives in the approval and marketing pathway, including fast-track designation and priority review for development. And a five-year extension of market exclusivity. It reduces the NDA review time from 12 months to eight months, and the NDAs are granted an additional five years of market exclusivity for a combined total of 10 years, regardless of patent protection. Now, this is their phase three trial, and this is from clinicaltrials.gov. We could see here the estimated study completion date is February 2021. In the presentation I just heard with the chairman from February 4th, there was a delay because of COVID, as it affects absolutely everything, in getting some of the hospitals that were signed up for the study to enroll patients. That being said, they are still enrolling them and they're expecting the study to be completed by April of 2021. So we're looking to be about two months behind schedule. And if you look at the charts for CTXR, you'll notice a drop around February 4th. It's because people weren't very happy with the fact that it was two months delayed, two months behind schedule. But there's not much you could do. COVID affects everything. And we're all just living in a COVID world at this point. Well, let's take a look at my four questions before investing in a company. Who's in charge? What's the product? What are the financials? Who else is involved? Out of all of the companies that I've covered so far in my DD videos, I am not exaggerating when I say Sidiox has the best, most accomplished chairman and CEO of any of these companies. So this is the chairman of the board, Leonard Mazur. He was the chairman of Leonard Maron Biosciences prior to its merger with Sidiox in March. So this is the guy that was actually developing Minoloc with LMB before they merged with Sidiox. And he was made chairman of this company. He has a BA and MBA from Temple. He was a US Marine. Marine Corps Reservist. The CEO is Myron Halubiak. He was the president of Roche for three years. Roche is like one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. BS in Molecular Biology and Biophysics from the University of Pittsburgh. Business training from Harvard Business School and the University of London. Advanced training from University of York Center for Health Economics. Leonard Mazur, the chairman, spent his first 10 years working for Cooper Laboratories. Cooper Laboratories spun off Cooper Vision, which is one of the largest eye care companies in the world. Also also, Cooper Dermatology, which had Aveeno as one of its flagship products. A lot of people know Aveeno. During his tenure, they launched Cooper Dental, which was a toothbrush company, and it grew into Oral-B, which was later bought by Gillette. He was the director of marketing at the Basf company, Null Pharmaceuticals, where he launched Vicodin. This guy is, is basically legendary. The companies that he's at produce medicines that make a difference and produce brands that grow massively. Myron Halubiak, the president and CEO, like I said, said president of Roche, founder of Emron, not Enron, 
Emron, a health economics and managed care consulting company, director of Bioscript. What's most important about these two guys, they've invested $26.5 million of their own money into Sidious. They held over 12.2 million shares and haven't sold any. The company's market cap is like $96 million, give or take. These guys have invested $26 million of their own money into the company to help it grow into what it is today. To say they have a vested interest in the company is a gross understatement. Question number two, what's the product? This is one of their letters to their shareholders. You can see their product development pipeline here. They have Minolock for the CVC infections, and we're already in phase three. We have Halolito, which is a prescription therapy for hemorrhoids. We have Minorap, which prevents infections associated with breast implants and breast reconstruction. We have City 401 IMSC, which is going to treat ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome. The ARDS one is going to be using stem cells to treat ARDS. This is still years away. On the investor presentation, they were talking about maybe 2023 for this one completing phase three. The lock therapy is the biggest one. The breast surgery one is kind of interesting, and it deals with infections that typically follow breast reconstruction surgeries and breast implant surgeries. It uses the same antibiotic as is found in the Mino lock. The hemorrhoid one, the Halolido, would give the first prescription strength product for the treatment of hemorrhoid symptoms. Looking forward, they're expecting Minolock to be a $750 million in the US alone and grow to $1.84 billion worldwide by 2028. They're starting phase two of Minorap by the end of 2021. And they're starting phase 2B in the first quarter of 2021 for Halo Lido. And like I said, it'll be the first FDA approved prescription product for the symptomatic relief of hemorrhoids, assuming it gets approved. Now they just had a presentation, like I said, on February 4th. If you're interested, you can access this presentation online. It's virtualinvestorconferences.com. You could just register and create a free account. If you go to their February 4th presentation on the calendar, you can see Sidious Pharma presented at 1 p.m. on February 4th, and you can go in and once you create an account, you can click this on demand button. It'll bring up another screen with the audio and slides, and you could go through the presentation yourself. Question number three, what are the financials? We could see we actually peaked leading up to that conference at around a buck 60 intraday. And now we're sitting at about $1.36. And I find this to be absolutely fascinating. This is stuff that you do not frequently see with small pharma companies. Insider ownership is 22%. Shares outstanding, 51 million. Shares float, 43. This makes sense that the float is that much lower because the insiders own 22%. Institutional ownership is 14%. Since the institutional ownership is so high here and institutional institutions typically don't trade their shares, you can really deduct another almost 10 million off this float. And the float for this company is in like the low 30 millions. That's insanely low. Basically any news for this company and the share price is going to pop. Plus, I mean, this isn't super high, but it is short at about 5.6%. Trading volume is pretty high given its number of shares. Now this is their earnings report they just released in February. It's important to note they have no revenue. This is a cash negative company. They're still in the R&D phase. They're burning cash. Their total operating expenses are actually increasing as they get closer to release, but they do have enough money to cover this. They just announced the closing of a $20 million private placement offering priced at the market. Based on the company's own releases, they have plenty of money to get through about another year of operations. We're not likely to see any more dilution anytime soon. They're just trying to carry this cash over until they get to the FDA approval and product release. Keep in mind the inside don't want to dilute the shares. They hold 22% of the company and they know that diluting the company hurts them more than it hurts any of the other investors. So they're not likely to dilute unnecessarily. And you can imagine with their experience, this is going to be an efficiently managed amount of money and they're going to make it last. Question number four, who else is involved? We already looked at the high insider ownership. Let's take a look at the institutions. We could see right around 14% held by institutions, 18% of the float. We have Vanguard, Hightower, Argent, Geode, Sabi, Sabi's in like every single pharma, the mutual fund holders, Vanguard and Fidelity. I'm going to go ahead and cut off a lot of the comments that I'm sure to get by letting you guys know there are competitors. Yes, but it's not competitors in the traditional sense of the word. The first one is from ICU Medical. The product is called the ClearGuard HD. These are antimicrobial barrier caps for hemodialysis catheters, only hemodialysis. The Minolock solution can be used for any CVCs, including ones for 
your oncology. As we saw at the beginning, there's many different reasons that somebody would run a CVC. This ClearGuard product is only used for hemodialysis. On top of that, it only reduces CLABC in hemodialysis patients by up to 63%. So this is good, this is a good product, but it only works in hemodialysis and it's only 63% effective. The other one that I know people are gonna talk about is CoreMedics CRMD, $13.7 a share. CoreMedics is releasing a drug called Defencath, and it is also being expedited by the FDA. It's for prevention of CRBSIs, not treatment, prevention. This is from the CoreMedics website. Defencath is an investigational drug product, a novel antibacterial antifungal solution being developed for the prevention of catheter-related bloodstream infections in patients with end-stage renal disease receiving hemodialysis through a CVC. Again, this is only hemodialysis and it's prevention, not treatment for an infection that already takes place. For Defencath, we can actually see that it's more effective than the ClearGuard. ClearGuard is 63%. Defencath is 71% effective, but that's still not 100%. So what's my point here? There are competitors with ClearGuard and Defencath, but they're not really competitors. Minolock is a treatment for an established infection, and Defencath and ClearGuard are meant to prevent infections from happening. But ClearGuard's only 63% effective, Defencath's only 71% effective, which means infections will still happen even if those are used. Plus, those are only supposed to be used for hemodialysis patients. So, Minolock has the entire market at its disposal. When you look at the cost that's not covered by insurance for hospitals when dealing with Cribsies and Clabsies, you've got an astronomical figure, and Minolock is going to be coming in something on the order of 30 times cheaper than dealing with the infection. Not to mention the approximately 20% morbidity mortality rate associated with Cribsies and Clabsies in CVC infections that Minolock is going to be able to reduce. This seems like an absolute no-brainer to me. We have a product that the FDA has already accelerated with the QIDP designation. We have it in phase three. It's supposed to be wrapping by April 2021. They're prepared, according to their investor presentation, to move immediately into the NDA, the new drug application. The FDA already expressed willingness to approve this. 100% effective in phase 2B trials. Minolock looks like a sure thing here, and it should start sales by the end of this year or early next year, depending on when that FDA approval rolls in. Now, to be fair, I think we should do a little bit of a SWOT analysis here. Strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Strengths, the product is one of a kind, and it has a very unique market purpose. It is financially cheaper than the alternatives. It is safer for the patients, the alternatives. Hospitals are going to save money. Insurance companies are going to save money. Patients are going to save money. Weaknesses. The company is tiny and they don't have any partners for distribution yet. They need to get some partners for distribution lined up this year to help proliferate this product throughout the world. One other weakness that we cannot overlook is the amount of money they have. They are low on money, the budget is tight, and if something happens with this FDA approval and it's delayed, the company actually might be in financial trouble and they'll have to dilute their shares again and sell more shares. As far as the opportunities go, I think the opportunities are kind of in line with the strengths here, but keep in mind for the opportunities, Minolock did secure worldwide rights for this product and holds the patent in the US at least until 2036. So the opportunity here is for uninterrupted market exposure for over a decade with this product. Minolock is going to completely saturate the market before anybody else is even allowed to come close. Threats. I think it's worth noting, you know, the old adage, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of treatment. With the ClearGuard and with the Defencath from Cormedics, you have those coming to market earlier. Defencath should be on market at some point this year, so hospitals are going to be adapting to that. Hospitals are already adapting to ClearGuard. The number of CVCs is probably going to be statistically decreasing by the time Minolock does hit the market next year. That is a threat. But you also better believe that hospitals are going to be keeping Minolock in stock because the Defencath and the ClearGuard are only effective for hemodialysis and they're only between 63 and 71% effective. So what's my play here? I'm probably going to be opening up a larger position than usual in Citrius. I'm thinking about 2,000 shares. My plan is going to be to wait for 
for the pump on the phase three results announcements and the FDA announcements, and I'm going to sell off my position to cover the rest. And hopefully I get somewhere around 800 to 1,000 shares with a cost basis of zero. And then I'm just gonna let those shares ride because I think the other products that Sidious has in the pipeline are almost equally as exciting as Minolock. And I want to be a part of this company going into the future. There you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, if you guys enjoyed the content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna be alerted to all of my content as soon as it goes live, hit that notification bell. Also remember, you can get almost all of the research information that I just found on Webull. They include all of the SEC filings, all of the news, all of the financials, analysis projections, which for Sidious, there's only two analysts covering it. Both of them are recommending it at a buy with a low high price target range of $4 to $6 in the next year. You could also do all of your TA on Webull. If you're interested in signing up for Webull, go ahead and use my referral link below the video. When you sign up with my referral link, deposit $100 into your account, you get some free stock, I get some free stock, everybody wins. It's one of the best ways to support my channel. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next week.